once again continue doing the one thing we can do, which is take the derivative. It's very nice that, that we're working with one and one object only, geometric vector, and we have one operation and one operation only, the derivative. So we keep doing the one thing that we can, and the results are just pouring out. That's how I feel about it. So we're going to do once again the one thing we can and ask the question of the derivative of the principal normal. Remember, the principal normal is, is a unit vector. So you tell me what direction it points in. And we're about to derive a very pretty relationship. And we'll do it intuitively. And then hopefully we have time today when we're talking about curves in three dimensions. We'll derive it analytically and it'll be cool. Okay, so I would maybe think about this picture. Here's your unit tangent. Here's your unit principal normal. Normal, the unit normal also changes as you travel around the curve. Tell me about its derivative. Well, is n unit length? Yes, by definition, right? T prime was not unit length, but by the time we took out kappa as its length, what's left is unit length. So here we have a derivative of a vector of unit length, constant length. What do we know about the derivative? It's orthogonal to the vector itself. Do you see how we're reusing the same rule over and over again? It's orthogonal to the vector itself. So it points along the tangent. So this is proportional to the tangent. The only question is, what's the coefficient? And you can actually figure out on an intuitive level what the coefficient is. And you'll see a very interesting minus sign, which is a truly interesting minus sign, and a very fundamental minus sign. By the way, what do you guys know where the minus sign how many identities do you guys know with a minus sign? That's a good question. How many rules, properties, laws do you know that have a minus sign? Throw one out. Quotient rule, that's good. The source of the minus sign there is that you're doing one over, you're taking the derivative of one over x that has a minus sign. That's actually very, very good. And there's another rule that you know with a minus sign that actually has almost the same origin as that minus sign. And that's differentiation by parts. You remember minus sign there? Okay, where are we? Okay, so we have established that this, the result of this differentiation is proportional points in the direction of the tangent, because that's the only direction that's left. If you're orthogonal to the normal, you point along the tangent. Now let's see what's happening. Let's intuit the fact that there is a minus sign. Do you see how t is a unit vector, the principal normal is a unit vector? And so they stay in this arrangement forever. They're locked in this arrangement. They just go like this together. Sometimes they go like this way, sometimes, sometimes they turn this way, like on this curve. Ah, let's see. Well, I have to be careful because it could flip. So at these, at points of zero curvature, it actually flips. But we'll talk about that in a second. Actually, that's an important point to discuss. But away from that, they're locked in their relationship. So, and let's just see. So let's look at this example and realize that they change like this along this curve. You guys are with me? So the incremental, the finite change, if we step a distance delta s in the principal normal, points in this direction. So in the limit, it will point in the direction opposite to the tangent. There's your minus sign. Do you see that intuitively? As this curves around the curve, this changes in counterclockwise direction. So at this point, the derivative, the derivative will point this way. You guys are with me on that? So minus, minus the tangent. OK? But what's the rate? Well, here you can observe that at whatever rate the tangent changes, because they're locked in this relationship, the normal changes at the exact same rate. And so that coefficient of proportionality will also be kappa. So this will be minus kappa 
because there are this there are this couple of ve vectors locked in their relative position. Okay, minus kappa n. Isn't that a nice relationship? The system closed on itself. You start with the position vector, you get the tangent. You take the derivative of the tangent, you get the principal normal. You take the derivative of the principal normal, you get the tangent back. The system closes on itself. Right, if you look at this, it's almost like a system of ODEs. Which tells you, by the way, that if someone prescribes how kappa, the principal curvature, depends on arc length, you can rebuild the curve by solving the system of ordinary differential equations. That's a fantastic insight. I believe it's called the intrinsic, uh, parameter, not parameterization, the, the intrinsic description of the curve when you're given kappa as a function of arc length. That specifies the curve, and the key to that is the fact that this system closed on itself. Two unknowns, two equations. The unknowns are tangent and the normal. The equations are first one and second one. These are called one of the Frenet. There's a second name sometimes that comes with it. It's in my book, but I don't know what it is. Don't remember what it is. Don't know anything about Frenet either, I'm ashamed to admit. But this is one of the Frenet identities. These become a lot more interesting when we consider the curve in three dimensions. 